Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today we're going to talk about the topic of magical names. What are they? How do you get one? How do you know what yours is? And while we're on that subject, is there any point to the name? What is its significance and the power behind it? So, without further ado, let's get into it. The magical name isn't really a new subject at all. However, it's been focused on quite a lot over the past couple of years. And I've been a part of many Facebook groups, pages, and many occult forums that have spoken on the subject. Some say you shouldn't say your magical name uh, because it can't be used as a, a piece of an attack. Someone can use it to attack you. But then again, somebody can use your birth name. Somebody could use your photograph. So it doesn't really matter. But some people believe that, that having the name, the magical name, is, um, is more of a sort of a, sort of a more direct uh, connection to your spirit. We can debate this all you want, and people can debate this all day and night. If you should say it or shouldn't, doesn't matter. There are many people out there that I know personally that have put their magical names in uh, their written works. For example, E.A. Coetting uh, as Archelus, and I believe Curtis Joseph even um, as Draconis, or Draconis, um, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, and so on. You get, you get uh, where I'm going with this. Now, these sometimes are names that are given to us. Sometimes they're names uh, that we may adorn ourselves. My magical name, I, I'm pretty comfortable with saying it, it's Kayvon. And uh, this wasn't the name I picked. This wasn't something that I thought sounded cool or anything like that. It was a name that was given to me. Now, what is the point of having a magical name? When you're in an operation, a magical operation, a ritual or spell or something like that, when you say your magical name, you're speaking from a part of yourself which is beyond the current state. What do I mean by the current state? The mundane self. The self that sometimes um, may doubt. So your name right now, your physical name, your mundane name, it's carried a lot of baggage. This identity, this persona, the ego, uh, that was a name that was given to you by your parents. However, what is, what is a name that belongs to you, truly and honestly belongs to you? Not one that was just given to you by your parents. And some of our names, some of our mundane names have meanings. You know, that, that we've been called this name for a certain reason. Many people are named after other people in their family. Many other people have definitions to their name. So, for example, Connor is uh, an anglicized name of Conchobar, uh, meaning wolf lover. And <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I do love wolves. Uh, but, but that's a whole other subject altogether. Anyway, so why would I use a magical name? Why would you use a magical name? When you're speaking from your magical name, you're speaking from a source of power. The magical name, the magical self, the, the magus, the magician, the witch, that part of you, when you're speaking from that and that alone, you're exuding, conveying such an unfathomable amount of power, uh, a limitless well of, of potential. You're speaking from a part of yourself that hasn't been programmed, that hasn't been constructed by environmental forces uh, like the media, your parents, your family, and so on. Because your name, whether you like to admit it or not, does have correlations with that. Today we're going to get into how you can do a simple, very simple ritual, very simple ritual, you can't even call it a ritual, basically a simple exercise on how to channel forth your magical name. So let's get into that today. I'm going to tell you what you'll need. You will need a black candle. A simple black candle. Uh, this hasn't got to be any specifics. Uh, just, just make sure it's a black candle. Okay, and if you can get a whole black one, that's perfect. Uh, if not, 
that's fine. Just just get a black candle. Also going to need either your journal, your spell log, your book of shadows, or even just a scrap of paper, a pen or pencil. And that is literally all you need. And of course you're going to need a lighter to light your black candle. Facing either the west, the east or the north and light that black candle. As you light the candle, what you're going to begin to do is you're going to open up your book or you're just going to get to a blank sheet, a blank page of paper. And you're going to hold your pen in your dominant hand. And you're going to hold the either your hand on the paper or the tip of the pen or the pencil to the paper. Don't go writing. Don't go doing anything. Light the candle. You're going to gaze into the flame of the candle. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to actually focus on the flame. Notice the way that it moves. Notice its dance of passion. Because the flame itself is a creature of passion. And the way that it moves, it's, it's elegant. It's a, it's a dance. It most certainly is. And people have said that staring into fire is very hypnotic. Dancing is very passionate. Dancing is very seductive. Dancing is very hypnotic. And these are also all characteristics of the element of fire. Seduction. Hypnotic. Passion. Gaze into the flame. And as you do so, take a couple deep breaths. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. A deep breath in and a deep breath out. And allow your rhythm to slow down slightly, but don't force your breathing anymore. Allow your breathing to gain a natural rhythm of breathing in and out. Very important because you don't want to force it. You just want your body to acclimatize to that um, breathing rhythm, I suppose, that, that cycle of breath. You're going to gaze into the flame. And as you gaze into the flame, speak to the flame. And I know this might sound strange, but all elements are conscious beings. Everything in the world is conscious, but the, the element of flame, when you light a candle, you can activate its dormant essence. You can activate that flame. Gaze at the flame and state, creature of fire, creature of flame, spirit of the southern watchtower, I activate you, I activate you, and I awaken your power, your spirit, and the mind that lurks within you. And begin breathing. And what I want you to do is, I want you to Notice that the flame is actually alive. Whether you notice this right off the bat is of no importance. But the flame before you is alive. And as you breathe in, breathe out. And breathe life into the sleeping flame. And as the flame awakens, feel that the flame itself breathes its fiery breath. Onto you. It's life, it's energy being passed on to you. And inhale. Hold it and, and, and feel it. And breathe out and pass your breath, your energy, back to the flame. Repeat this. Repeat this over and over. And what you're going to begin to feel is a cycle between you and that flame. It synchronizes you to that flame. It synchronizes you to that element. And why this is so important is because we're going to be using this flame, using this candle as a gateway. 
a gateway into the, all the worlds of spirit, into to the world of magic, to, to the beyond, to the other side. No specific. At this point, state you can state these exact words if you wish, or you can tailor it however you'd like. But this is what I would tell my clients in my mentorship to say. I, and state your real name, open forth the gateway of fire. And I call into the worlds beyond. May my voice echo through all the realms. May my words echo through all the planes. May my voice be heard. See my signs, hear my voice and do not forsake me. I speak out not to the all, but to the nothing. Hear my voice, hear me now. I call onto the powers of magic. I call onto the powers that be. I call onto thee. I call onto thee. I call onto thee. And as you keep reciting that, I call unto thee. I call unto thee. Notice that the breath or the essence that was normally coming to you and the candle, instead now disperses outwards and filters throughout the whole area. As if there is something, an essence that has trickled through that flame, trickled through that invisible opening. And has spread throughout the entire room, or the entire temple, or the entire area. And it only intensifies each gaining minute, each gaining second. A, a, a sort of like a blanket. A blanket essence that, that hasn't just descended on you, it's descended on the air around you. That, that every molecule is vibrating. That, that every cell in your body is shaking and trembling. And you can feel even, even your subtle bodies move and react to this. And that there are astral winds swirling around you. Unfelt until this moment, unheard until this moment. And the, the voice of magic, and there, there is a voice of magic, there is. At that moment, take your pen, or take your pencil and put it on the paper. Close your eyes and hear that wind if you don't hear that wind, feel that essence. If you don't feel that essence, just know the knowing. Just know it's there. By the powers that be, by the powers that be, by the powers that be. Reveal my true name unto me. By the powers that be, by the powers that be, reveal my true name unto me. At this moment, your mind should be clear. You should clear your mind. Do not allow your, your mind to, to get in on this. Gaze into the flame until you're in a state of withdrawal. Until you're, you're so lost within the energy around you and in the moment that you literally cannot think anymore. Empty into a sort of a no mind state. And at that moment... Feel the power that is around you to move your hand. Or you may just feel an urge out of nowhere just to write a single letter. Do it. Don't question it. The second you begin questioning, like, is this just me? 
I, I'm the one writing it, so is it just me? I don't feel a hand pulling me. Doesn't matter. You're feeling an urge to do something right now. Do it. Follow your intuition. Follow the forces that are around you, within you, above you, and below you. And do the first letter. And you can look at the letter if you wish. Then look back to the flame. And if you need to, recite again. By the powers that be, by the powers that be, reveal my true name unto me. By the powers that be, by the powers that be, reveal my true name unto me. And gaze into the flame. Entering into that state again. You may be able to write the whole name out straight away. A lot of people are able to do this um, letter by letter. Some people, the more the more clear audience, will have the name spoken to them immediately. Some of them uh, will look at the paper, and if they're they're excellent at scrying, for example, the scrying mist that would normally be in a mirror or crystal ball, where the mist would then dissipate and the vision would be superimposed on the scrying surface that would happen to the paper and then the name would be there and then they would write over the name if you feel like that just doesn't feel right ask yourself is there another letter and if so keep writing Many people have theorized exactly what, um, who's giving you this name. Some would say it's uh, a, I, I've debated this with quite a few people. Some have said to me it could be your ancestors. Some people even say it could be you. Not you, you, but like your higher self or even your God self or even the self, the witch kin within us. Some people have even said that it could be ancestors, it could be guides and spirits. People say it is just the powers of magic itself that, that give a name onto each of those that wield it. Whatever that may be, once you have your name, gaze into the flame and say your name. Say, I am and then say your name. I am. And say your name. And notice. How the energy within you changes. How the energy within the environment changes. And even how that flame changes. The, the key principle here is the trust in yourself. That is the key principle. That is a key principle here. Can you trust in yourself? Can you remove the doubt from your mind? If you can't, it's going to be extremely hard for you, extremely hard for you to do any of this. Anything in magic, anything in life for that matter. Trust in yourself. And the name that has been given to you is your name. And wear it with pride, wear it with honor. Speak it. In moments of ritual and spells where you need to conjure forth the, the totality of the will that is within you. Sometimes we feel like we can't muster enough strength. Speak that name. I am and speak that name and um, the sheer force of strength that you never knew existed. Suddenly exude from you. Confidence that you never knew was inside of you exude from you. Self-love that you thought you wouldn't ever be able to achieve. Exude from your heart. When you need to push more power into your ritual, or you feel like you, you just haven't got what it takes to, to complete the spell, speak that name. That is the name of the silent self. The name of the hidden self. That is the name of the hidden self. The name of the, not, the silent self. The one that dwells within. Speak your name. Because that is your true name. So brothers and sisters. 
I hope that helps. Comment below. I'll be interested to hear in your magical names. I'm interested to hear all the names of my brothers and sisters. Until we meet again, infernal blessings to you all. Goodbye for now.